Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another video. And today I'm setting up my bullet journal for September with a vintage illustrations from a book of fairy tales sort of theme. Sometimes my themes are intimately tied to what's going on in my life at that moment. And sometimes my themes are just random things that popped into my head, which is the case this month. I was trying to think of what theme I wanted to do for September and the illustrations of fairies, specifically in old, you know, vintage editions of fairy tale collections kept popping into my head. And even though it's a bit random, I decided to just go for it. Especially at this point, after many years of having a bullet journal, I've done so many themes at this point that it can be difficult to come up with unique ideas. So when this popped into my head and it was something I hadn't done before, I jumped on the chance to do something different. Because this was a vintage illustration inspired theme, I knew I wanted to use some of my tea stained paper. I'll link the tutorial I made in the description box if you want to tea stain some of your own paper to use in your bullet journal. It's very easy to do. And every few months I'll do a huge stack so that I have a stash of tea stained paper ready to go whenever I need it. I'm starting by prepping all of the spreads with my tea stained paper, deciding which pieces I wanna use, where I want them to go, ripping them to shape, gluing them down, and cutting the edges nice and tight to the page so that everything's ready to do the actual art. But before we get into the setup, I wanna take a quick second to talk to you about today's video's sponsor, Harry's. My husband and I have been exclusively using razors from Harry's for years now. Harry's blades are made in their own factory in Germany where they've been making blades for a hundred years. I love that Harry's balances affordability and quality. Other brands are charging more because they can, not because they should. My husband and I trust Harry's not only for our day-to-day, -day, but also for our most important moments. We both used our Harry's razors the morning of the biggest day of our lives, our wedding, and they've been with us ever since. I've used Harry's razors before a big audition. My husband used his Harry's razor to tidy up around his facial hair before his first day of work at his new job. Whatever's coming your way, Harry's has got your back. Harry's offers everything you need at a factory direct price. Nothing more, nothing less. The German engineered blades give you such a close shave, leaving your skin silky smooth. We all know that saving money is more important now than ever. So save on your razors with Harry's without skimping on quality. Click my link to get your own Harry's trial set for just $5. That's a $13 value for just $5. So don't wait, click that link and get your own Harry's trial set today. Thank you to Harry's for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into the setup. So getting started here with the actual illustrations, and of course, I'm getting started on the cover page. This drawing is just an amalgamation of random elements that I thought might look cool together. So the structure of this drawing is a bit of a gothic window that is overgrown with vines and foliage. Maybe this is in an old church that has been abandoned and started to return to nature. And through the window, we can see the sun and the clouds and some birds in the sky, as if this is a church somehow floating in the air. It has a little bit of a mythical quality to it, a little impossible. And of course, to incorporate that sort of fairy tale theme, I am drawing a little fairy sort of hovering next to the window there, looking out towards the sun. Once again, it's sort of random, but I feel like it works, so just stick with me here. <laughs> As you'll probably know if you've been watching my videos for a while, I like to start with the simple shapes and add more and more detail in layers. So I'm starting with the basic shape of this window, trying to get some of those more gothic details into the window pane, and then starting to add more and more details so that it doesn't look quite so simple and empty. It has a little bit more texture and contrast, it's a little more dynamic. I make liberal use of my ruler and my circle template, but I also do a lot of freehanding of things. I'm not too worried if everything isn't perfectly symmetrical or doesn't perfectly line up, especially because I know in my mind the way that I'm going to keep adding detail that's going to sort of camouflage things that aren't quite perfect. 
I'm using my Secura Microns in a variety of nib sizes for all of these drawings, mostly focusing on the narrower nibs, so 003, 005, and 01, but occasionally using some thicker nibs here and there. For my fairy, I'm using the finest nib I have, 003, because the fairy is pretty tiny, and even though I'm not adding a huge amount of detail, I definitely want to try to get in some of the basic shapes here, and the finer the nib, the easier it is to draw something so small. Now that I have the basic shape of the window and I also have my fairy here, I want to start on the foliage because I really wanted this to look overgrown and abandoned. So I'm adding a bunch of leaves all over the place, sort of growing up one side of the window and across the base, and starting again with a finer nibbed pen, but I'll be going in later with a thicker nib just to add a little bit more contrast in certain areas, some darker spots, just for a variety and more interest and depth. I'm purposefully making this very asymmetrical just to make it more interesting and also for a more organic quality since plants don't tend to grow in perfectly symmetrical ways. Getting started on what's outside of this window, so a sun and some clouds and some birds. Starting again with those basic shapes, simple line art, drawings, the outlines of all of the elements here. And then again, going back in after that to add so much more detail to all of these elements. I decided to fill in the sun and make it dark, which might seem counterintuitive, but I really wanted the sun to stand out. And because overall the drawing, although it does have some darker areas, it is quite light and low contrast. I thought making the sun the darkest element of the drawing would really draw your eye to it in a way that appealed to me. So that's what I decided to do. I'm adding a bunch of little lines and dots and things to the clouds. I'm adding darker areas and lighter areas. Again, just trying to add in more detail, trying to give it a bit of a more vintage print quality. And then I'm just grabbing my alphabet stamps to stamp out the header here along the bottom, September. Moving on to the opposite page here, which is going to be the quote page. I wanted to have something loosely tied to Arthurian legends. So here I'm drawing a sword that's sort of half pulled out of a lake with a fairy next to it, as if the fairy is using its magic to pull the sword out of the lake. Once again, starting with the basic shapes and then adding much more detail, darkness, contrast to various parts of the sword. And the fairy itself, again, very lightly drawn, very simple because it is so tiny. And I like that the drawings have a lot more contrast, have a lot more detail in dark areas, whereas the fairies are very light and simple and almost fragile or transparent looking, which feels appropriate for a fairy. I did consider at one point painting the fairies, just the fairies, and keeping everything else black and white. I thought it might be fun to add a little bit of a color glow for each fairy, but I ended up really liking the black and white sort of look, so I decided against it. But I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments if you think it would have looked good with the fairies sort of gently glowing in different colors like green or blue or pink or yellow. Um, because I went back and forth so many times, but ended up happy with my choice to stick with black and white. 
The part of the sword that's under the water is much lighter, lower contrast, sort of wiggly, wobbly, like you're looking at it through ripples in the surface, so it's distorted, whereas the sword that's above the surface is much more rigid and detailed and contrasted. The quote I decided to use for this month is, we come spinning out of nothingness, scattering stars like dust. And that's a Rumi quote. I actually recently purchased a collection of Rumi's poetry, which I have been really excited to read. I'm thinking I might include it in a video of reading classic literature from different areas in the world as a part two of my reading around the world reading vlog, which was really fun to do. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me read Rumi poetry for the first time in a video. For a little more interest, I decided to stamp the word stars more spread out, like it was expanding in the void of space. And then of course, to add a bunch of sparkles and stars around the word stars, as well as around the fairy, like I did on the cover page, adding that little bit of whimsy and magic and finishing off the quote page with a frame. I'm doing more of a solid frame for the outer rectangle, but then the inner portion of the frame is a little more rough, broken up, almost worn in looking, which I feel gives a nice effect. Finishing that off with little diagonal lines to connect those two rectangles as if it were a frame. And that's the first spread finished. Flipping over to the next spread, which is going to be my calendar for the month, starting with the artwork. This is an updated version of a concept that I have drawn before. I actually created a theme for my husband a couple years ago where the cover page was sort of mirrored images of staircases going into archways and one was going into sort of a sunny day and the other was going into the night sky. And this is basically a different style of that same idea of these stairs going into an archway that leads into the night sky with the moon and some clouds and the stars and of course, incorporating that sort of overgrown foliage effect. And I have a fairy at the base of the stairs as well. I feel like this concept for a drawing is so magical and it always captures my attention. It feels like stairs leading into a portal that could take you anywhere to space, to another planet. And it really adds to that sort of mythical, mystical, fairy tale kind of feeling for me. So it was really fun to revisit this concept with a different art style. I wanted to add a few more details to the archway, some columns with a few details, again, pretty rough and free-handed, but just to add something a little extra instead of it being really simple, I thought it would fit in better if it looked like this could have been an archway and a staircase that was in the same Gothic church that had that elaborate window on the cover page. So it wouldn't be something super minimalist and simple. It would be something a little more intricate and detailed. I'm adding the hint of a brick wall around the archway just to give it more context, to give the illusion that I've drawn the wall and more of this building without actually having to add too much detail and adding in my stars so that I can go back in with a nice thick nib pen. This is the 10 nib and fill in the whole background in black. So it really looks like a dark night sky. Of course, I'm using the same technique of starting with the loose shapes and some of the more simple line art and then going back in and adding much more detail layer by layer by layer. Mm -hmm. 
Moving over to the calendar itself, I'm drawing all my little calendar day boxes. I like to do three by three squares with a single space in between each. My bullet journal is a B5 size, so I can fit a whole month this way on a single page. But if you are in a smaller notebook, say an A5 size, you would maybe have to make your days smaller or potentially spread them out over two pages. Adding in all the dates here, and then I'm just drawing diagonal lines through all the extra boxes. I usually do my calendars with only the actual days sort of in the shape of the month instead of having every week totally filled in. But this time I made a mistake and I added a couple extra boxes in that first line. So I decided to fill in the rest of the line and then just indicate that those days weren't part of the month with those diagonal lines. This is just a little tip for anyone who's ever added extra days and you didn't want to bother with trying to white it out or cover it with something. I feel like this is a solution that also looks nice. Using my stamps to add the headers for the days of the week, and then also adding 09 for September and adding some more foliage just to tie everything together. Some foliage around the 09 there, but then also some foliage on the upper left hand and lower right hand corners of the calendar. Adding the final detail to the drawing here, just some stars and sparkles around the little fairy. And then flipping over to my final set of spreads, my weekly spreads, doing the same layout I've been doing for months and months at this point. So I'm cutting away the outer third of each page, alternating between cutting straight up and cutting out a tab. Again, in my bullet journal, which is a B5 size, I cut my tabs two by two for the diagonal, four spaces tall on the straight side, and then another two by two diagonal back in to make that little tab shape. And like I said, alternating a straight cut and a tab cut, straight cut and a tab cut for as many weeks as I need. And these tabs just make it a little easier to flip between my various weeklies during the month. Plus I like how it looks. You don't necessarily have to cut this much off the page if you're making tabs. You could easily make the tabs so that they reach the edge of your book. And I've done that in the past, but in this case, I wanna leave the outer thirds empty so that I can use them as monthly task lists. The one on the left is going to be my work task list, and the one on the right is going to be my personal task list, and this way I can see them no matter where I am in my weeklies, I can always refer to these master task lists. For the weeklies themselves, I'm splitting the two-thirds that's left of the page into two, so that each day of the week has a third of the page horizontally, but is the whole page vertically, and I have space for each day of the week, and then a final little space that I use just for priority tasks, note taking, whatever I need, just an extra space each week. I made a little template of my tabs out of some scrap paper, doubled, so that I could use that to cut out the exact size I needed out of some tea stained paper. This was a little bit of scrap tea stained paper and fold those over the tab, gluing them down so that I could have three perfect tea stained tabs. And that brings us to the end of this setup. So I'll do a little flip through for you of all the spreads. I really like the sort of fairy tale mystical feel that these spreads have. And like I said, even though I was heavily considering painting the fairies so that they would be the only thing in color on the spreads, I'm kind of glad I stuck with black and white. I really like the effect. It does have a very vintage print in a book sort of feel, especially with that tea stained paper. So let me know in the comments what you think. Would you have done something different? Do you like this setup? I love to hear your feedback. Of course, give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I share my bullet journal setups each and every month on my channel. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you to my patrons for your support. My patrons will get printables from this setup as always. So if you would like printables from this setup, feel free to join the squad. There'll be a link in the description box down below. Thanks again to Harry's for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description box to get your Harry's trial set for just $5. That's a $13 value for just $5. So you don't want to miss out. Get that Harry's trial set by clicking the link in the description box down below. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye friends.